I'm Basti Hirsch. I work as an education activist in Berlin and um, yeah, based at Humboldt Viadrina School of Governance where we have an education innovation lab and yeah. And I, I guess it's the same as elsewhere. The system itself, you would say, is behind the times and everybody is talking about how we need to change it um, to make it more relevant. Um, there are always some places, some pockets of innovation, some institutions that are ahead um, and serve as an inspiration for others. But um, the question is, how do you bring it um, to scale or how do you learn from those um, people who are already advancing and already have a new model? For me, innovation is trying to see... Um, I mean, let's, let's talk about education uh, and new approaches in education. So I would say um, an innovation may be that um, you bring new stakeholders um, to the table, that you have a new model um, that solves a particular challenge, that uh, you integrate technology that wasn't there before and do it well. Um, so it's changing what we already have um, and then making it, yeah, making it work um, and making it something that other people can learn from. And I think I quite like the, uh, the matrix that Charles Leapeter works with, that he talks about um, uh, disruptive innovation um, as well as the incremental uh, improvements um, and talks about the stuff that we have in formal education and in informal education. So if you look at the interactive whiteboard, that's something that um, is an incremental uh, advancement to formal learning settings that we already have where yes now you do have digital technology but mostly um, we know this from studies it's still being used in the old way with the teacher standing in front and then the outcome is that the students who sit in the back are able to read it better than if you were using um, yeah, a blackboard so um, technology may be an enabler or uh, a vector of innovation, but it doesn't have to be. Yeah, I think the question for me is what can we do with the technology that we have? And um, sometimes you can have a very radically new way of doing education and you don't need to have uh, fancy technology. And I think that's the, yeah, the state of technology that we do have with smartphones, uh, with Wi-Fi and so on uh, being available, um, being already being used by many students, not in formal learning settings. Uh, they're oftentimes forbidden there, but they, they might be used. So, yeah, it's, um, yeah, the, as you say, the social applications or um, the use of the technology, the affordances that we draw out of them. One I really liked um, was IC Stars uh, in Chicago, uh, which is a I believe four-month program uh, for um, yeah people who don't have jobs but are um, providers of families. So there are some people that they are responsible for, and they are uh, in a very um, accelerated and very intensive way um, being trained for high-tech jobs. Um, and the way they do it, the way they look at their um, participants, um, the culture that they have there, also the informal learning that they create a context for that is going on there is something that was highly inspiring us, especially the results. They say that uh, three years after the program, they see that um, yeah, how the, the incomes of the people went through a triple um, and they really, within the short time frame, were able, were able to um, help their, um, yeah, the people who were in the program to get into jobs that wouldn't normally be available or open to them. That's one. Um, I also quite like the Stanford School of Design Thinking um, and the new building that they moved into in 2010. Um, when I was there, my feeling was that if the classrooms that I send my kids to uh, some, some 10, 20 years down the road look like these school looks today, you know, we may have been successful in some ways. Um, so not having a front, uh, having a very... Um, very flexible uh, learning space um, that was an inspiration for sure um, and there are many other places also in Germany and um, yeah, in other countries as well I'm sure
I personally have been, uh, I don't know, been distancing myself a little bit from the term scale or scalability. Um, because for me, um, education or, you know, innovating in education is both uh, an individual challenge as well as a global challenge. And then the scalability question always seems to be asking or, or seems to be implying that we already know what we need and we just need to bring it to scale and uh, help to uh, grow those things within the system. Um, I'm not sure how true that is. I think there are many more things that we need to invent that that then might scale. But certainly um, the, the things that I'm excited about are inspirational and are uh, elements of this new thing that is emerging. One phrase that we've been using quite a bit um, is um, it doesn't quite work as well in English, but uh, it's with an iPhone in the woods. Um, the idea that um, particularly um, progressive educators uh, in Germany and certain elsewhere as well, um, they have a very critical or at least skeptic view uh, on, on screens, on um, TVs, computers, because they say, okay, we want to educate the whole child or the whole person and that means you know you use your body you go outside in nature you learn um, uh, outside or uh, at the place where you want to learn things you don't learn in front of the screen and um, I think that by now um, it, it should certainly be regarded um, as a false dichotomy because you can take your screen and ta can take your smartphones um, into the woods um, and then learn outside in nature and then use all the affordances that you have by bringing a camera, um, by recording the sounds, by um, looking up what kind of um, yeah, tree you have in front of you and so on. So yeah, that, that is one vision I believe, that, or one small way of explaining things to parents or teachers perhaps that helps them understand that it, it's not an either or, nature or technology, but it's about bringing them together to learn.